excited about having uh, the panel that includes uh, Christy, Sheila, and Ben. And I am always excited about any opportunity that I have to interact with social workers. For those of you who may not know, I wanted to be a social worker since I was in eighth grade. And so indeed, having a, a history here uh, with NASW really makes my day. So um, thank you. I want to uh, begin by sharing a quote. And you're going to see that I just love quotes. The quote that I want to share is, a lot of people have gone further than they thought they could because someone else thought that they could. I truly believe that because in essence, where I come from as a sharecropper's daughter, it is amazing that I'm here today and I'm here today because of lots of mentors and people who have supported me along the way. And so when there was an opportunity to talk about mentorship, it felt as though it was right for me, so I'm delighted that I'm here. When I was preparing for this talk, I um, decided that I was going to Google some famous people and to see what mentors they had. So I was surprised by some of them, so I want to share it. I should start by sharing it with you. So um, Julius Caesar was the mentor to Mark Anthony. Socrates, the mentor to Plato. Mahatma Gandhi, mentor, mentor to uh, Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, mentor to Jesse Jackson. Mike Wallace, mentor to Barbara Walters. Barbara Walters, mentor to Kathleen Gifford. Oprah, as you all know, mentor to Dr. Phil. Madonna, mentor to Gwyneth Paltrow. Audrey Hepburn, mentor to Elizabeth Taylor. Johnny Carson, mentor to Jay Leno. Jackie Gleason, mentor to Larry King. Duke Ellington, mentor to Tony Bennett. Bing Cosby, mentor to Frank Sinatra. One that surprised me, Tina Turner, mentor to Mick Jagger. <laughs> Ronald Reagan, mentor to Christy Tard Whitman. Al Gore, mentor to Joe Lieberman. Al D'Amato, mentor to George Pataki. Sigmund Freud, mentor to Paul Young. I share this to say that none of these people did it by themselves. And if you ever have the urge to Google, you will find countless amounts of other people who were mentored. And it's important to say that, in essence, mentorship is necessary for success. The bonus is that not only is mentorship good for the individuals, but it's good for the organizations as well. Despite the fact that the mentorship is focused on the mentee's need, there are many benefits that come from doing the mentoring. And basically, you are able to, in addition to developing the mentee's capacity, you, in, you are able to develop your own capacity in terms of helping to strengthen your skills and to help sustain the profession. One of the things that I feel that's truly relevant here, and Sheila will comment about this a little bit later, is that uh, the relationship is a give and take. It's not just for the mentee, it's for the mentor as well, and the relationship changes as the mentor and the mentee grow in their development. Now, in the past, we've always known that mentoring was a time-tested way of being able to move your career. One of the things that we need to keep in mind that things have been a-changing recently, and that it's a different world. So in the past, you could pitch your career to a rising manager, but today, senior level managers or supervisors are as likely to lose their job as you are. 
So in essence, what that means is that if you've been identified as the protege of a, men of a mentor who loses their job, you're more than likely to be leaving yours at the same time that that person does. So it's important to keep in mind that connecting to one person only is dangerous. In essence, what we need is the idea of being much more diverse in the amount of people that we're connected to. I want to also say that all of my mentors have been mentored, but the ones that are the superstars have personal boards of directors. And so I want to talk to you about that because in essence, a personal board of directors is indeed necessary throughout your career. And as a matter of fact, it gets to be even more important as you progress in your career. According to the uh, business magazine Fast Company, a personal board is a vast pool of, uh, of knowledge and resources and experts that come from people that you gather to support your career. And they're basically a group of trusted individuals who you would normally not have access to to pay attention to, to your career. Now what makes it most important is that it's a virtual board. Now a virtual board means that it's not like traditional boards, that there are no committees, no commitment, no fiduciary responsibility, no invitation. The only common thread is you. And the mentor's only role is to sharing their wisdom and knowledge nuggets with you. It provides an avenue for being able to get information and enhance your career at no cost to you. The most important thing about it also is that you can request a skill set from a group of people at any time. And as time goes on and you have less of a need for certain people, they can fade into the distance without ever having a dialogue. <laughs> Some members don't even know that you have a board, nor do they know that they're on your board. <laughs> It helps to maintain your professional goals. It helps you to be true to your vision. And it basically helps you in times of transition. You might say that it's your personal, professional posse mm -hmm. that's there to help to offer you unbiased, their unbiased opinions. Now, no matter how well you could do, you could do 10, 20, 50, 100 times better if you have a personal board of directors. One would say that a virtual board, personal board of directors is, a magic, is the magic that fills leaders. You can't just wake up and say, okay, now I want a board. It takes time, it takes practice, and surely it takes a lot of conscious thought. It's extremely important that you're thinking all the time about how can people add to, how can I add people to my board? And basically creating a board, you need a mix. You need a balanced mix of members and you need people that are close friends and associates, but you also need people who are not connected to your decisions so that no matter what it is that you do, it's fine with them because they're offering you an unbiased opinion that isn't personally connected. It's also important that you have, have older and younger and people in different parts of their career. And for me, it's important that I have fresh young thinkers on my board. Both my children are on my board because they're the ones that suggest that I need social media. <laughs> and I have social media accounts of all sorts. And one of my mentees, um, another young, fresh mentee, suggested that I needed to, to connect my Twitter and Tumblr accounts. <laughs> How else would I know about that? 
<laughs> I'd also uh, like to suggest that you need lots of social workers on your board, and you need people that you admire, but also people who are outside of the profession, people who will help you to think outside of the box. The more diverse your board is, the better for you, the more opinions and viewpoints that you will have. Each board needs both sponsors and mentors, and of course they're not the same. A mentor will help you with the daily strategies having to do with day-to-day -day advice around your career. A sponsor is somebody that's going to vouch for you. They're going to open doors for you, and they're going to put their relate their their history, their reputation to work on your behalf. So it's important to have a combination. Uh, ben Cole is going to talk about that as, in a little bit. And basically, how do you find these board members? You find it by looking around this room. You find it from prior colleagues, former employers, supervisors, speakers, workshop leaders, professors, people that you find on social media from Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. And most of all, what you need to keep in mind, that most desirable board members are busy. So don't ask them. Don't ask them to be on your board. And keep in mind that, it's, that the board is virtual, so that means you don't have to ask them. It's too formal. Most people who are you want on your board, plates are already too full. So in essence, it's important to be able to keep in mind that what you need are very short consultations on a sporadic basis. If somebody were to come and ask me, will you be my mentor, the answer probably would be, I'm so sorry, I can't, my plate is too full. But I know that many of you are on your board of directors and you didn't even ask me. <laughs> It's important that you keep in mind that it's a virtual board, so what you're doing is phone calls, emails, sometimes a live chat. I want to also suggest to you that you're going to want to keep an eye out for when people are offering to be on your board. They might be possible board members. I know that some of you know that uh, for a lot of years, I was responsible for more than 100 social work interns each year. And each year, I'd kind of keep an eye out for somebody that was, was enthusiastic because we needed uh, to have a few representatives that would represent the organizations as students. So there was a young woman that I had uh, identified. She was smart. She was very well, uh, she presented very well. And I called her up a couple of days after school started, and I said, I'd be really interested in finding out if you would uh, come with me to some meetings and represent the organization. And she said to me, um, does this count towards my placement? <laughs> and I said, yes. And so she then said, I thought that was a legitimate question. And then she said, am I going to get compensated for the travel time that it would take? I started to get a little worried. She then said, going with you to meetings isn't a part of my job description. At which time I felt it's time to move on. And the next person that I called was our very own Gwen Butler. And she took me up on that offer and has continued to take me up on many offers since then. So I want to say that it feels important to be able to recognize that oftentimes when people are making an offer to you, it's important not to ask them for compensation for coming to, to school. As a matter of fact, this young woman has since approached me and told me years later that she realizes that I was trying to offer her support. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> mentorship is different uh, than friendship. Mentorship, board membership, is different than friendship. As a board member, you help people to find answers that are right for them by asking questions, sharing stories, and making non-judgmental observations. Some of the things that people have asked me uh, for help with is oftentimes big decisions. Uh, this, some play, someone is here tonight who I recently met with who's basically struggling in an unreasonable job situation. And this person is thinking about whether or not to move on and the pros and cons of staying despite the, the fact that they've been in the role for a long time. They're also thinking about what the next steps might be. And I want to say that there are many social workers that often are struggling with the impact of race and racism and how it impacts their work, how it impacts their relationships with each other, our profession, and our clients. And whether or not you're a, a white man that's a, in a social work class that has 26 mixed race women, or a petite white woman who is in a residential setting with younger uh, with young men of color, or a large man of color that's supervising a predominantly white staff. Each of these people are struggling with issues that have to do with race and racism. For each of them, I say, go to the People's Institutes on Doing Racism Workshop. <laughs> Gain an understanding of the overarching rubric of internalized racial oppression. Internalized racial oppression, whether it is internalized racial inferiority or internalized racial superiority. But that will help you to be able to bring your best self to the work, your relationships with each other, as well as with bring your best self to your uh, clients. What's most important about this is that it's important to be able to have anti-racist social workers on your board so that as issues come up, you're able to, a mixed race board, so that you're able to talk and get different perspectives on what the issues are. And that is something that I hold myself accountable for Others hold me accountable for. And in essence, Ron Chisholm, who's in the audience tonight, holds all of us accountable for. One of the major issues that causes a social workers problem have to do with money. Many of us as social workers are come to the profession with issues related to money and work. It's the place where mentors really make a difference. And if you can have people on your board who can help with money, it's extremely important. I understand, I used to worry myself about the fact that clients would think, if I talked about money, they'd think that I only was there because of the pay. As time goes on and with different mentors, it's come to, it's gotten to be really clear to me that in order to keep our doors open and to keep from being hounded and losing your job, you need to be able to deal with the relationship between money and the work that we do. And if you're in private practice, you need to be able to talk about money and understand that the role that money plays in being able to keep your doors open during your private practice. Otherwise, it's not possible to succeed. Over time, mentors have helped me to realize that, yes, I need to negotiate for salary, added salary. But the other thing that I need to understand is that sometimes when cash money is not available, perks 
and the keys to the executive cabinet are, are perks mm -hmm. that, that will help to be able to make your life better. Mm -hmm. And those keys include flexible work hours, working from home, conferences, training, exposure, representation, and those things are almost as good because they help you to build your portfolio. The other thing that mentors and board members have helped me with is that no is not a final answer. It's just the beginning of the next phase of the negotiation. <laughs> so often when I talk to mentees or people that I'm helping to develop their board, I say to them that Knowing your work is such an important part of being able to have a successful career as a social worker. It helps to keep our spirits and our bank accounts fed and it sustains the profession. So there is nothing better that you can do for a mentee than to help them to understand their work and to negotiate for what they deserve. On my personal board, I have a special board member that I'd like to please stand, Elma Denham. Mm -hmm. Elma Denham is a social worker. With 60 plus years of experience. Alma introduced me to the concept of organizational life and suggested that I needed to attend the William Allison White Institute. I thank you for that, Alma. And the reason that I thank her is because before going and understanding organizational life, I spent a lot of time taking stuff personally. And social workers, most of the time when they are in pain, it has to do with something having to do with organizational life, whether it's about power, boundaries, authority, roles, task. And Alma, over time, has done nothing but pounded that, those ideas into the heads of the many, many people that she has mentored over time. It's the, sub, it's the kinds of issues that keeps you awake at night. It's the most important issue in terms of being able to be your best self and to have productive relationships within your organization because if you're really upset with people, we pout and don't work constructively. And as Elma would say, it's not personal. It's about the role. And so having people on your board who can talk about the issues relating to the role, and it's not you. The other thing is that a, part, a subset of my board I refer to as the SWAT team. <laughs> and these are the folks that I need to call when I need an answer by morning. When I was uh, in a role, um, I, at the Jewish board, I had been there about six years. I was pretty happy with my roles. A high executive called me up and asked me for a meeting. And of course, I didn't have a meeting before the meeting. That was then. I never go to meetings without meetings before the meeting. <laughs> but he called me and asked me to meet, and I've been happily bouncing into his office, and he was there with a, um, another uh, high-level person and said, I wanted to let you know that we are very interested in promoting you to a, a bigger job, and the job is twice the size of the one that you're doing, and I'd really uh, like to offer it to you. And I sat stunned. I, I knew how to smile and act as though I definitely wanted to do this, and my mind is ticking away and thinking, I have another job in mind. I didn't say that. I smiled at him, and the one thing I did know to say is, well, thank you. I will call you tomorrow. 
he said to me, I'm surprised. Do you, you know, you, uh, I thought that you might be interested in moving up. And I again thanked him and I ran out the door. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to someone who was a part of my SWAT team, even though I didn't call it that at the time. And I talked about the fact that it wasn't quite the job I had in mind. That there was something else that I wanted to do. And this person helped me by saying, you can say thank you. And I was able to do that and move on. One of the things that I help people to do, and two years later, the drop of my dreams came about. But I'm saying it to say that oftentimes people don't have that backup. They need the answer by the morning, and they absolutely don't know what to do. The other thing I wanted to mention is that I, um, I was on a board, a, a real board, not a virtual one, and I was in a power struggle with some people. And uh, I had seen a woman who was about 15 years my senior. She was tough, she was strong, and basically her presentation style was greatly different than mine, especially at that point in my life. I called her up and asked her uh, if I could have a consultation. She said on the phone to me, you can't afford me, <laughs> but I'd be willing to have lunch with you. I'll let you buy me lunch. And of course, I uh, went to lunch with her and I described the story to her about the uh, issues that were going on for me. And I'm going to give you a cleaned up version of what she said. <laughs> she said, how old are you? I said, I'm 38. She said, you need to cut that little girl crap out, claim your voice, and start to Speak up. She gave me straight talk, no chaser. Exactly what I needed. I often think about that situation. It changed the course of my of of my professional career. And basically it's the role that I often try and play for others. It's been 20 plus years since then. I meet with her once a year. I take her to lunch. <laughs> I no longer eat at lunch, I just have tea, just in case I'm gonna hear some straight talk that is for me. But in between, I often think, what would she do when I'm faced with the dilemmas? So I help people to think about those things. I've been told that I have five minutes left, so I'm trying to figure out what is best to share. I want to um, say that the payment for a uh, personal board of directors is basically that you pay it forward. You share it with other people. And in essence, make sure that there is somebody that you know that can profit from some of the help that, that you can give to them. I also want to ask each of you to look around the room and catch the eye of somebody that you don't know and say yes, yes, yes to three different people. share my resources with you. Yes, I need additional contacts and wisdom. Yes, I am interested in expanding my board. So together we can build a net that works to support our communities and sustain our profession. 
So I would like for each of you to commit to finding at least two new board members for your board this evening. And make sure if you're young, get some older wisdom. And if you're older, make sure you have some young, fresh perspectives. I thank you for having me. for sharing their time and allowing me to have this opportunity to speak um, about my own experience in creating virtual board of, of uh, directors. Um, throughout my personal professional life, I've been blessed to have many individuals serve as mentors, guides, positive role models, and resources, all with the intention to nurture my growth and development, as well as to push me out of my comfort zone. I am clear I would not be here or who I am today without the unconditional support and guidance I've received over the years. However, while developing these powerful and authentic relationships, I tended to rely mainly on them for personal development, rather than on navigating the complexities existing within the professional arena. It really wasn't until I accepted the position as the first program director of the Percy E. Sutton Seeks Urban Male Leadership Academy at Baruch College where I quickly discovered how critical it was for me to be intentional in cultivating professional relationships outside of my immediate work environment in order to support me in effectively designing and advocating for a program that develops and promotes the academic excellence, social consciousness, and leadership skills of black and Latino college Sikh students at Baruch. In all honesty, I did not set out to work primarily with black and Latino young men. However, I, when presented with the opportunity, I chose to take it on because I recognized the systemic exclusion and invisibility of black and Latino males in higher education. I also recognized that I had a responsibility in ensuring that I develop a program that not only honors and informs who they are, but also addresses within an anti-racist and anti-oppressive lens the institutional barriers and racism present within higher education. beyond myself in order to do this work. So in structuring the UMLA program, I consciously called upon, included, and developed professional relationships, particularly with professional men of color who work directly with black and Latino young men. Two such critical key figures who also serve as UMLA facilitators are social workers Andrew Lawton and Maurice Lacey. Yet it has also been within my role as the program director of the UMLA program where I've been most confronted with my own insecurities, fears, um, and limitations as an advancing professional woman of color. Over the last several months, the focus of my mentoring relationship with Mary Pendergreen has been learning to affirm, embrace, and trust my voice. I am naturally a soft-spoken individual who would rather work behind the scenes and not call too much attention to myself. I'm also very introverted and shy, but as my role as the UMLA program director regularly calls me to speak and attend meetings with college administrators, as well as develop relationships within um, individuals who can and want to contribute to the UMLA program. And many times I'm faced with resistance and the oppressive institutional barriers when advocating and putting the experiences of black and Latino young men on the table. However, in my work with Mary, I'm learning not to internalize this and instead name and claim who I am. As a light-skinned petite Latina, I recognize there are certain perceptions of me as well as privileges that I have. Rather than view this as a setback, I can embrace who I am and assert myself as a powerful professional woman of color. This is not an easy task, especially when navigating and being confronted daily by systems and individuals who believe otherwise which is why it's critical to create and nurture one's virtual personal board of directors. 
Although I'm fortunate to have a strong support system within my work environment, including the seat director and founder of the UMLA program, Dr. Angela Nassamo, who's here today. <laughs> and social workers, Raquel Williams and Susan Wong. <laughs> the task of manifesting my vision and creating transformative and affirming educational experiences for black and Latino young men requires me to expand my network and resources. It requires me to step out of my comfort zone and thus call and rely on those individuals on my virtual personal board of directors to ground me and challenge me as well as affirm who I am and what I stand for. Within the UMLA program, we stress to our young men the need to build social capital and relationships in order to succeed academically, personally, and professionally, as well as combat oppressive systems. And thus, I too must do the same and model the power of cultivating and nurturing professional mentors and relationships. I want them to see and know that professional growth and development is a lifelong process. And though it is not easy, they do not have to do it alone. Several, most, several of our most active UMLA student leaders are here tonight at uh, the NSAW annual meeting. So they're over there. In representation of the entire Percy E. Sutton Urban Male Leadership Academy program. I extended the invitation to them in order for them to witness and participate in this intergenerational gathering and dialogue around creative mentoring and virtual personal board of directors, and thus share with them, share with the rest of the Umilic boards. Collectively, we're expanding ourselves and modeling what is possible. Additionally, I want them to witness firsthand the positive impact of my mentoring relationship process with Mary. As social workers, it is important for us to include the communities we work with as much as possible in transforming oppressive systems and institutions and allow them to witness our own personal struggles and willingness to be vulnerable in front of them. Again, we must consciously reach beyond ourselves in order to effectively do what we do every single day. Thank you. And now I invite Sheila Ramey to the mic. <laughs> Life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Um, you know, I, I have been mentored in various ways for a lot of years. So I, I hear other people that say that. I'm a social worker, I've been mentored by social workers, but I have to say that I didn't realize until I was pretty much older that I was being mentored by social workers when I was a youth in a youth program many years ago. And I was mentored as a youth worker by social workers, though they weren't saying that they were social workers. And, and what I can say is, is that the thing that Mary names, which is that uh, uh, the quote of people believing in you, that, you know, uh, you yeah, know, trying. I don't remember the exact quote, but what I can say is, is that that is so important early on because we may be interested in creating personal boards at this point to help us professionally, but there are a lot of young people that need to know early on that someone believes in them. And I am clearly an example of many people at different points recognizing just how special I was and I am. So it, and, um, The family I came from, where there was a lot of love and a lot of challenges, I had family also who mentored me early on. And I could not be or would not be where I am if it weren't for my Art Kitty, who is 80 years old and who was a secretary for the city of New York and who scored 100% on a test she took and was so proud and told me that she wanted me to be the boss. That's what she told me. She said, I don't think there's anything wrong with being a secretary, and I have been a secretary and a whole bunch of other jobs at different points in my life. But she said, I want you to be the boss. Now, what does being the boss mean? Hmm. So in terms of being mentored, I've been mentored by a lot of people who showed me various ways to be um, a leader that was significant to me. And the most significant to me has always been when someone has taken um, and can see the great in someone, like not just what is, is, is um, where they're challenged, 
I mean, that's a gift. When you see a challenge that someone has and you can show them um, how to grow uh, from that challenge, but that you really, really focus on what they are good at and, and you give them space to grow in that, it's really important. And um, uh, my, I have one, my current supervisor, I just want to name, because she's here, Sharon Madden. And um, you know, there's, there are things even in my, in, my, in my life today that I still feel challenged in. And there are things that I'm learning. So Mary mentioning the part about learning about money, she's been talking about this with me and a bunch of other people for a while. And quite recently, last week, let's say, I was dealing with this and got a lot of help around it and learned with other people together in a team. Uh, about why this is important. Now, I've known this for years, right? But I need people who can show me why it's important and can model for me. And the other part about mentoring is that a mentor, the relationship changes over time. I have known Mary for a lot, a lot of years, right? So I won't tell you exactly how long I've known her, but let me just tell you that the first time I ever saw Mary was at a job fair. Social work uh, paraprofessional job fair. That's for people who didn't have master's degrees yet exactly, and she was bringing in people of color into the agency of the Jewish board. That was a long time ago. I'm 50 years old. I don't remember how old I was then, but I had my bachelor's degree at the time. And I saw this woman, you know, just like James Baldwin is powerful and he was small. Like, I saw this little, when I saw a little woman that, with this, this power, and she said to me then, she said, if you go to get your master's, I could help you get a job now, but if you go to get your master's, I will be able to do more. And that's how Mary mentors and has modeled for me. I have seen people, have seen people over the years. It's about paying it forward. I may not see, a lot of people who worked on me or with me when I was younger, they don't always get to see the fruit of the labor. That's what this is about. You don't always, Mary gets to see the fruit of the labor in relationship to me. Right? She also gets a lot of labor out of me. Those of you who know Mary, you know, right? right? But, but a lot of us will not get to see the fruit of our labor when we mentor. But the other gift of our mentoring is, there are people who I've mentored uh, or I would say coached in terms of my, my role as a supervisor. But then there are people who really chose me. Like, they chose me. I'm trying to give them to somebody else. I think I know somebody, a Latino woman who could do, and I think I know this. And those people, they turn around one day and say, you're my mentor though, right? Right? And these are people who are quiet, didn't talk much, and then all of a sudden from all this time of us, you know, cross-pollinating, they end up telling me what they want. This is what I wanted, right? I wanted them to tell me what they wanted. And they recognize that I'm busy, and I can give what I can give. In terms of my relationship with Mary, which she's modeled for, and I do the same, I am very, very, very busy. But there are people who call me, and I don't care what time it is they call. I thought I was one of the few people that, that you know, Mary sometimes called early to kind of <laughs> get things going. But I recognized in her retirement party that many, many people have access to her, but you can't have access all the time. That's what you have to recognize when you are asking people to be a part of your life in this way, be a part of your virtual board. Some know, some don't. Most don't know that they're on it, is that people are busy. But you know the depth of that relationship. And that's the other piece about mentoring. It is really about the relationship. It's not necessarily about an agenda. A mentor wants you to be the best person you can be for you. And if they benefit from how great they, you are, well, then that's good too. But that's not their goal. You know, and that's the gift of mentoring, is that you don't always see it, but you just know in the world that you've done something with somebody and they're going to pay it out. So the other piece is that, for me, I work with all kinds of people, I mentor all kinds of people, and I'm mentored by a range of people. But what is really important to me, especially in the day-to-day, -day, thick of the thick of it, is I have to have people in my life who are conscious. Because the stuff that I have to deal with, the stuff that I take on as a person of color, as a woman who is not straight, as a woman who is bisexual, as a black woman, as someone who came up from a poor economic background, as someone who has makes much more money than my mother, probably my grandmother, a couple of the people together in one year, and it's not a lot, right? <laughs> I need people to understand that people have sacrificed blood, sweat, and tears so I could be where I am. 
said, yeah, we're all busy, but if this thing's going to work, I mean, Mary, Mary will get back to me within a day no matter what. She could be in Alaska if she's going to get back. Or a spa, more like that. I'm following she's at the spa. So you're looking for a baseline of professionalism. You might find brilliant people that you very much admire, but if they're disorganized, etc., they're probably not going to be the best mentors. Axiom 4, share a common interest with your mentor. Really identify somebody that isn't just a rising star in an organization, but that you care about the same things that they care about. Uh, for Mary and I, we shared a passion for social group work. Uh, she, you know, invited, yeah, yeah, group work. Yeah, she got me involved in ASWG, encouraged me to present at their conferences. Uh, one of the biggest pieces of work that I'm really most proud of is we developed it. Uh, she, she helped me choose group work major at Hunter. Hey, Woo! everybody, 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 everybody,
students every year. We did an experiential didactic training. And we trained thousands of folks on nobody's dime. We made a part of their internship and counted uh, over 10 years. Which leads me to the next axiom, be ready to roll up your sleeves. All right? Being a mentee is not a, you're not a passive recipient of the mentor's wisdom and brilliance. So just pour it in. Here we go. You got to work. And you've got to be ready to do and volunteer for the grunt work. You know, you're not just sitting down for the meal. I want you to sweep the floor, set the table, and clean it up. And, and if you really want to get the most out of those relationships, be there to do all of that. Make it easy for that. And, you know, working for Mary, I, I know. You know I've been through some of that. You know, we, we, it was all the fun stuff, but there was a lot of behind the scenes, too. Mary talked about sponsorship, and I want to kind of segue towards that because she very much has sponsored me and many of you in our careers. Um, you know, to get there, both of my parents were college professors, and long before Google and Bling, if I was unsure of a concept, there's not even Bling, it's Bing. <laughs> If I didn't know about a concept or something, uh, you know, they, they, they'd say, well, there's, there's a dictionary, you know, before wiki. There's the encyclopedia. Look it up. So, of course, in preparation for my remarks today, I did. You know, it's interesting that me mentor is actually from Homer, from the Greek. And the mentor was the dude that Ulysses entrusted to protect his home and to educate his son, uh, you know, you know Polemicus, uh, when he went to sack Troy. And I think that protect and educate are very much words that are in play here today still. And I think kind of straddle the companion concept of, of uh, sponsorship. Protection is a major part of sponsorship. Now, Mary and I, our essential work was, you know, moving, helping move the Jewish board from a diversity paradigm through multiculturalism to be identified as one of the lead anti-racist agencies in New York City. And that work took, oh, a decade and is still going on. Uh, but what was important, you know, with, with, with this is that early on, Mary would take me into, you know, Dr. Siskin's office for a meeting with Paul Levine or some other, you know, guy that I was terrified of, and, uh, and, you know, and, and, and she'd say, hey, hey, Alan, this is the guy I've been telling you about. And I knew without a shred of doubt from that point forward, Mary had my back, you know? And that's really, you know, I'm not even going to say that's, vernacular. that's my vernacular, that's how I talk. You know, have your, 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 your mentor needs to have your back, and you need to know it without question. And it will evolve, you know, it might not happen right away, it evolves like all sorts of relationships involved. But once I knew that, I was ready to do anything, to go from that, because we cared deeply about that together. Now, the other thing about this is that, you know, Mary, uh, it, it wasn't just about protection, it wasn't just about uh, support, etc. it was about challenging me. Um, you know, we, we'd be strategizing about anti-racism and how we're going to add some breadth or depth to the program. We're going to bring in people. And Mary would be curled up on her couch there, and, and I'd leave with this long list of things that I was going to do afterwards. And, uh, it, but, but during, I'd go down the list, and part of it was, well, we're going to call these people. And these were, these were deans of school social worker, luminaries like Bob Schachter, you know, folks that, that in the field here, and I was just a little program to director, you know, uh, executives at agencies, and I split up the list, and I'd say, okay, Mary, I'm going to do this, that, and the other thing, and you're going to call all these folks, right? And Mary gave a little twinkle, and she her and she said, oh, no, you're calling me. Said, Mom? You know? uh, and she put me up to it, and, you know, and she, she shared her power, you know, and over the years, you know, my confidence sort of gradually grew. But, you know, she challenged me to take those risks, and the mentor needs to, or the sponsor will do that as well. 
So, you know, there's a last, there's a last axiom here, and about third or fourth down in the dictionary of Webster's on mentorship is the word admonishment. And I thought that was a very interesting word to find there in the definition. You know, admonish somebody is you know, chastise them, you know, get on their back. But you know, think about some of the things that we have said this evening. There is definitely an element that people challenge you. They get your mentor, if it's going well, they get to call you on your stuff. And Mary definitely did that with me, especially in the anti-racism work. You know, Mary and I, uh, you know, we went through a lot of our own development together in terms of our racial identity. You know, this is 12 years of work for us. And Mary could call me out on the internalized you know, racial superiority. There was no question this straight white male was, you know, all over the place with that stuff. Uh, and, 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 you know, and, and it was very important that she could, because not everybody could. You know, not everybody could. I'm having a trouble with somebody that I might be mentoring or supervising or co-leading a project with. And Mary would basically say, you know, why are you doing that? You know, and I would, I would be upset and angry at the person. Well, why? Why are you doing that? You know, one of the things I can remember clear as day, she, and so like her friend called her out, she did that for me time and time again. And, uh, you know, that helped me grow. And I trusted her over time. I mean, it wasn't always uh, pleasant. <laughs> I knew better. So, you know, th these are unique relationships. Uh, they're not your friends, uh, but they're friendly and they're supportive. They're not your supervisors, but, you know, they're helping shape your development professionally and your professional identity. They're not your therapists, but they're great, you know, listeners and they're dealing with very intimate matters. And in some ways, you know, it's, it's absolutely a unique relationship. And so I feel, you know, blessed to be included with this panel and uh, blessed to be a, a mentee of Mary's, and uh, you may all find each other. Please follow up on her admonishment this evening to go to look somebody that you don't know and get them on your board. So thanks for giving me a moment. Mike, is not a question, but it's an affirmation to the board. Thank you very much. You know, <clears throat> Yeah, but you know, me that, know that I'll say this. I'll be 78 next year. But you know, all through my life, once in a while I come in contact with people in my experience who put a nail or, or uh, a name on some of the experiences that I've had. I didn't realize that I was an organizer most of my life until I came in contact with the Anti-Racist Alliance. I didn't realize that I had been Ron, uh, Ron, I, yeah, I don't get that scene that bad. But the People's Institute pointed out to me the things that I was doing was organizing. And being a part of them helped make me be more effective. So it's important to identify what you're doing. Tonight, I didn't realize that I was mentored. You know, from the time I came out of the womb, going to my grandmother my, in all the villages. Uh, say that a village raises a child. Well, I'm a product of that. But I'm a product of mentoring. And thank you very much for labeling that for me, because mentoring is important. And the things that I'm doing, I realize that's what I'm doing. Thank you very much, and I look forward to finding another time. Thank you. Speaking to the question, kind of like what Christy touched on, you know, you're dealing with your own insecurities as a future mentee, you know, how do you kind of determine that for a potential mentor, that they truly believe in you, that they truly see something, and that you don't just dismiss it and say, well, maybe they're just saying that, you know, how do you determine that for us as future social workers, you know, graduating students, to get that phone call or to get that email, it, it feels so amazing, but at the same time, it feels surreal. So how do you get sort of beyond that and, you know, follow up and know that there is some kind of relationship building there.
First, if someone is identifying you as having some value and worth and you're not seeing it, just say you're afraid to yourself or to some other people, or even to them, and then move it on. I think we're going to conclude our Q&A. Mary Pendergreen is uh, doing a raffle. If you were not able to put your card in the boxes outside, I'm very sorry. But thank you, Natanya, for bringing yourself in. <laughs> okay, so there are two raffles that are being uh, held right now, and I'm going to choose the winner. One is for a free one-hour consultation for building an effective virtual personal board of directors. And the winner is Jacob Wicks. Are you in the house, Jacob? Jacob may not be here right now, but we have his... Jacob is probably staffing the pace table outside, where he's already beginning to gather his uh, board. <laughs> well, I'm sure he will put this to great use then. And we have a second winner, and this is a free one-hour consultation with Mary on the fundamental of building Fundamentals of Building and Growing a Thriving Private Psychotherapy Practice. Ooh. Going in the box. And the winner is, business card, Katherine Kate Farrington of Columbia University. <laughs> is Katherine in the house? Well, her business card is here. She is a winner. This concludes our meeting and just a few highlights. We want to encourage people to check out the flyers in the packets as well as the short videos which we're playing at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, committees are a place where mentoring relationships develop naturally. Committees are the lifeblood of our chapter. Get involved, get into a committee. My green wristband is gonna get me a half off price drink at the after party. I will be there, meet me there. The wristbands are $5. Buy it outside, meet me there. Let's party after this. And finally, each one, reach one. Give a membership, oh, sorry, after participating in this evening's program, we want you to go out and encourage